Hey there, how's it going guys? Mr. Olson here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Life is good. So, solve each equation, check your solutions by substitution. Um, problem number one, we've got three times in parentheses x minus five plus parentheses minus five equals four times in parentheses x minus five plus parentheses minus x. I'm going to go over both of these with you guys because we're going to see similar types of problems in the lesson today. So, problem number one, oh, go ahead and solve this on your own, pause the video, and we're back. So, we distribute that. 3x minus 15 minus 5 equals 4 times x minus 20 minus x. Minus negative 15 minus 5, that becomes 3x minus 20. 4x minus x, that's the 3x, still minus 20. And then we get rid of the 3x from both sides. Give us negative 20 equals negative 20. That means we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. And it means that x is equal to all real numbers. Problem number two, 4x plus 5 plus 2x is equal to 6 times in parentheses x minus 1 plus parentheses plus 6. 4x plus 5 plus 2x, that gives us 6x total plus 5. Over here we have 6x minus 6, we distribute that plus 6. A lot of 6's in this problem. We can combine, oh, those actually cancel each other out. We can go with 6x plus 5 equals 6x. We can subtract 6x from each side giving us 5 equals 0, which those are not equal. So, therefore, there are no solutions. Cool. We will see both of these as they apply to the systems of equations today. It's going to be good. That's today's objective. We can solve systems of equations by graphing. Go ahead and uh, graph both these lines. If you don't have graph paper, uh, you may want to pause the video now, see if you can find, find something you can print off from online. Or, come and bug me, I'll give you a piece of graph paper, alright? A lot of graphing today. So pause the video, graph those two lines, and we're back. So 3x minus 5, that has a slope of 3 over 1, y-intercept, and negative 5. So we start at negative 5 there, and go up 3 to the right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. y equals negative x plus 3, slope, negative 1 over 1, y-intercept, 3. So we start at 3 here, we go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, and so on. Giving us this intersection right here at 2 comma 3, or 2 comma 1, sorry. We've got some vocab today. Whoa, that wasn't supposed to happen. System of equations, that is two or more equations. We will be mostly dealing with systems of two equations, but you could have more than that, all right? Two or more equations that are related. That relation could be that uh, we've got two equations that are related to the problem we're working on. We're solving a problem involving how much money a company's making. And so we have two equations that are both part of that problem. Or it could just be that they're related because I just gave you a problem that has two equations in it. Solution to a system of equations. On a graph, that is the point or points where the equations intersect. Point or points where the equations intersect. Um, so here, that's that 2 comma 1. If we think of it in terms of the equations, this is more the algebraic way of thinking of it, this is a more geometric way of thinking of it, visual versus uh, abstract. It is the x and y values 
that make the equations true. So if we had three equations, we need to have all three of them intersecting at the same spot for that to be, in a, for that to be a solution. I have to have all three of them making the equations true for it to be a solution. Four equations, four, yeah. So let's look at that. If we put in a 2 for x, oh, let's let's write this out, x equals 2, y equals 1. If we put in a 2 for x and a 1 for y, that gives us 1 equals 3 times 2 minus 5. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1, 1 equals 1, check. And here we would have 1 equals negative 2 plus 3. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1, check. Okay, in the book we're going to look at this problem. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can answer these questions after reading through the problem. Alright? Pause the video. And we're back. So it says we charge $4 for each long sleeve t-shirt to set up the field 160 to create the design. Um, so here it says to cost, the cost of 20 long sleeve t-shirts. That would be uh, $4 per shirt times 20 shirts plus the 160 for the design. A lot of people said those are expensive shirts. Not really. $4 a shirt is actually pretty cheap. 4 times 20, that is 80. 80 plus 160, 240. Calculate the money we'll earn from selling those. So $8 per shirt, 8 times 20, 160. You might notice the amount we made from selling it is less than the amount we made from uh, the amount we spent buying them. That's bad. That means that we probably uh, aren't going to make it. Well, we're, we're losing money on that. We're losing $80 there. So seven, can I get the cost for 50, 50 shirts? If we make more shirts, maybe this works better. But if we only make 20 shirts, we know we're losing money. There's no way to make up the money. So four times uh, 50 this time, plus 160. Four times 50, that is $200 plus the 160, 360. $360. And the amount of money we'll earn from selling those. So $8 per shirt times 50 shirts. That's 400 Hey, we made money this time. $40. For a fundraiser at a school, that's not a whole lot. That's enough that we could buy a textbook. Maybe a, pair, a couple pairs of gym shorts. Um, a chair. Two chairs, maybe. Not a lot of money. Think, what could we do to make this fundraiser more profitable? To make more money? Pause the video and think of one of the things we might do. And we're back. So uh, we could sell the shirts for more, is one thing. If we sold it for, say, $10 a shirt, or even, honestly, for a good long sleeve t-shirt, I'd be happy to pay $15. Last year, about uh, our stage crew shirts cost $50. And yeah, they were great. Uh, for a long sleeve shirt, uh, it's where backstage, they breathed very nicely, they were very comfortable. Uh, they didn't go overly hot. It was really pretty good. Um, yeah, so for a long sleeve shirt, that's uh, not a bad price. Um, if it's a good shirt. We could look at another company to go with. Maybe that $160 is just way too much. Go with a different company. Or we could look at selling a lot more shirts. The more shirts we're selling, this four is an increasing our amount by too much. Here we spent $80 there, here we spent $200 there. The more shirts we're selling, the smaller that 160 is as a portion of our total uh, cost. So, selling more shirts, also a good idea. Okay. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, let's now look at graphing these. We can write an equation, uh, y equals $4 per shirt, so 4x plus the 160 that we're paying each time. And then for how much money we're making by selling them, y equals 8x, $8 per shirt times x number of shirts. Then we could graph this. Let's graph up to the points that we have, the $400 we made by selling, and the 50 shirts we made that we sold. That's 40, 30, 20, 10. And then that's 400, 360, 2, 320, 280, 240, 200, 160, 120, 80, and 40. So when we sold 20 shirts, we had to pay, what was it, 100 and no, $240 for that, for those shirts. If we sold 50 shirts, we were paying 360 for those shirts. Oh, and our y-intercept in that equation is 160. So we can get three points there. We're going to graph this. I'm going to graph it with thin lines. I usually prefer long, uh, thicker lines because they're easier to see. But in this situation, we really want to have thinner lines. Because we want to be as precise as we can. 
So there's that line of how much it's costing us. How much money we made. So we made $160 selling those 20 shirts. We made $400 selling 50 shirts. The y-intercept here would be zero, so it should go at that point as well. In one of my classes, the numbers just weren't lining up, and it turns out it's because uh, I was graphing wrong, but I could tell that it needed to go to the right spot. By looking at the graph, I knew I was doing something had to be wrong, and I was able to figure out what it was. It was kind of nice. And now we can see that they cross right here at 40, 320. What does that tell us? Think about that for a second. Pause the video. 4120, that tells us that that is our break-even point. That is where we stop losing money on shirts. We sell 39 shirts, we are losing money. We sell 40 shirts, we're breaking even. We sell 41 shirts, we are making money. Yay, I like making money. Um, in every system of equations, that uh, point where they cross is a kind of key point. Let's say that our two graphs were two different runners. One of them started earlier than the other, and the other one's running faster, so they're going to catch up eventually. We could use the, uh, the point where they cross. That's where the one runner catches up to the other one and passes them. Uh, if we had, oh, we did the missile ones. The missile, we talked about missiles the other day. The point of intersection, that's where the two missiles uh, cross paths, where the one missile will hit the other one. That's how that works. So, yeah. So that's that. Okay, moving on. Graph these sets of lines. Pause the video. And we're back. So this one, our y-intercept is at positive 1, slope 2 over 3, up 2 to the right 3, same thing opposite way. You know what, with systems of equations, this is why I recommend you may want to use something to help you draw it better. Ruler, uh, side of a book, whatever. 2 over 3x minus 3, up 2 to the right 3, down 2 to the left 3. On one like this, it doesn't matter a ton, but... Uh, the more cleanly you draw your system of equations, the easier it is to tell where the solutions are. So what's the solution to this one? If you remember on our warm-up, we had no solutions as a possibility, and that's what's happening here. These never cross. If this is a company and one of these equations is how much money we're spending, how much money we're making, if they are like this, parallel, never crossing, then we never make money. We are always losing money, and that's, that's sad. That's not how companies should work. Um, yeah, no solutions. Um, if this is two runners, that means the one runner never catches up to the other runner. They're always going the same speed. If this is our missiles, that means one missile goes this way, the other missile comes that way, and they don't hit each other. Sad. We just started World War III. Really annoying. I don't agree with that. Okay, number seven, graphing these ones. Both of them have the same y-intercept and the same slope, which means they're basically the same equation. So the the solution is the points that are in common, the points you have on both lines, and they have all points in common. That means there are infinitely many solutions. However, it is not all real numbers. I sometimes have students that will say all real numbers for this, they'll say x equals all real numbers and y equals all real numbers. Technically speaking, in this particular situation, yes, any real number could work for x or for y, but for each x, there's a specific y you must have. If x equals 2, y equals 1. If x equals 3, y equals 3. If x equals 1, y equals negative 1. x equals 0, y equals negative 3. You can't just uh, say all real numbers and leave it at that because it's kind of oversimplifying it. If there's many solutions, that's not all real numbers. Okay, try out these ones here. Pause the video. And we're back. So y equals negative x plus 3. So we start at uh, positive 3. Negative x, that's a slope of negative 1 over 1. Down 1, right 1. Down 1, right 1. Down 1, right 1. And so on. y equals 1 half x minus 3. We start at negative 3 there. Go up 1, right 2. Up 1, right 2. Wow, that worked badly. Number nine. Oh, so our solution is 4, negative 1. As a point, 4, comma, negative 1. As an x and y coordinate, x equals 4, y equals negative 1. Be used to the idea that there's quite often two different ways this solution may be written, either as a point, as a ordered pair like this, or as an x and y coordinate. Okay, number 9, y equals negative 2x plus 4, y equals x. So negative 2x plus 4, that's going to start at positive 4, and we'll go down 2 to the right 1. 
for that negative 2 over 1. Keep doing that, and there we are. This one, well, we'll start by doing it this way. y equals x, we start at 0 at the origin, and we go up 1 and right 1. Same thing opposite way. You might notice there is not any point we have in common of our kind of integer points, our points where both are whole numbers, both coordinates. We cross right here. This is why it can be good to actually use a ruler to make sure that you're getting the exact point. And now we can see more closely where this is. It's maybe like one and a quarter, one and a third. I don't know exactly. This is a problem where we'd want to use a different type of method for solving it. If you don't get an integer one by graphing, you are not just kind of guess. I don't know, 1.3, 1 1.4. Don't just guess, all right? Number 10, let's look at that one. It's 2x minus 3, so starting at negative 3, up 2 to the right one, up 2, right one. If you have any problems with graphing on these, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out with that. At this point, I'm assuming you know how to graph. All right, we've done that a lot this year. Yeah. And then 3x minus 5, starting at negative 5 there, up 1, right 3, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. And we can see that we had this point that was in common at 2, comma 1. Notice that by drawing my line really thick and drawing it uh, kind of sloppily, it more looks like they're crossing up here than there. How you draw things, how, if you're a little sloppy, this can kind of cut, uh, cut you, this can hurt you on these. Okay, try out each of these ones. Pause the video, and we're back. 13th one I want to talk about. Negative 2x plus 1, so starting at 1, going down 2 to the right 1, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. Same thing opposite way. Oh, and that's, we're going to use a careful line on this, all right? I have some students that can draw their lines carefully enough that uh, they can see it really well on their own. They don't have to, like, do it perfectly. For me, I need a tool if I'm going to make a good line. I am terrible at drawing lines. It's something I've been working on since I started teaching. I'm still, I'm better than I used to be, but I'm still not great. Down three, right one. Down three, right one. Down three, right one. So these lines don't cross. Or do they? Notice that as they go off the graph, sometime just after they go off the graph, they are going to cross. I think that's at 4, comma, negative 7, maybe? They will cross, so don't say no solutions. If the two lines are not parallel, do not say no solutions, because that's going to be incorrect. Well, that's it for uh, this lesson. That's what we're going over. I'll see you uh, later. Oh, it's update next time. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, I'll have a sub on Monday the 13th and Tuesday the 14th. So, uh, Expect that, that I will not be there, whether you're in my A-Day or my B-Day class. So, yeah. See you later. Have a good one.